Hi folks, welcome back to the Garage de la Del Boy. Today we have a little play uh, with a chain. Now, just risking here uh, a bit of an egg sucking lesson. Those of you who know how to take care of your chain, just fast forward or move to another video because this is really for those who don't. This really is something that we should all know, uh, but there are people who don't, and I see chains on bikes quite often that have had no care. Really and honestly, no care at all. Just so you can see by the state of them. So your chain is, yeah, your final drive chain, is quite an important thing. This is a reasonably new one. It's done about 2,000 miles, so it's really just too loose. It's starting to flap about. It needs adjusting, and it needs cleaning. Cleaning is something I see very few people do. They should really be cleaned as often as a month, every other month or so, especially in the winter when all the salt and crud gets on them. The reason that you need to clean them is that we use lubricants of all kinds, chain lube, I'll get to that in a minute, and we lubricate them and that keeps them from getting rusty because it keeps the water off. But the road surface creates all kinds of grit, dust, broken glass, flint, all sorts of stuff that sticks to your chain and it forms a pretty effective grinding paste and it just grinds everything away. Um, it also holds the salt. Uh, you can see that chain there, look. That's staying where it's put. It, it does need a little bit of lubrication. It's a bit dry, and that's my fault. I should lubricate this more often. I've had Harleys now for so long, I've kind of got out the habit of chains, but I'm getting back into it with a bandit. So the important thing on a chain is to clean it first before you start putting more lubricant on top of the dirt. It's really a no-brainer. It doesn't take a lot of common sense to work out. Just lubricating over the dirt isn't doing any good because the dirt's keeping the lubricant out. In your chain, if this will focus, uh, probably easier on the back. In your chain, you've got little rubber O-rings in there and in that gap between the outer plate and the inner one. And those rubber O-rings get covered in, in, in road cack and old lubricant. And when you put the lubri new lubricant on, it's just sealed, it doesn't get in. So the lubricant that's in there forms a wax, it gets all hard and greasy, and the chain just starts to wear out. And your chain life should be on a bike that's well maintained. If you go the full hog and you have the old automatic chain oiler, you should be looking at 35 to 40,000 miles out of a chain. Ordinarily, I'd say about 20 to 25,000 miles at least out of a chain. And if you don't maintain it, you can get that down to the life of a tire. Five or 6,000 miles, that could be knackered if you don't take care of it. So tonight I'm just going to go over the basics. Uh, you can ignore this if you know it all uh, uh, and you've done all this. I don't mean know it all. If you if you know this and you've done it before, excuse. It's just for those who don't because I see a lot of bikes and clearly from looking at them, some of the bikes don't out there have any maintenance on their chains. Even if it's a raggedy rat bike, your chain is important. It's as important as your sprockets, your brakes and all the other stuff that, that keeps you safe keeps you from falling in the hedge. So the chain needs a little bit of adjustment and tension. First job is to clean it, to clean the old chain lube and the crap that's all stuck to it off. And the method is to use some ordinary oil. This is just a cheap version of WD-40, and I mean it is cheap, one pound for a massive can. WD-40 is about four quid for that size, or five quid, so that's cheap. And that's great, because I can just squirt that all over the chain. It acts like uh, a, a solvent. Now there's another important point, do not ever use brake cleaner on your chain. It's a proper solvent and it's extremely solventy and it will just take all the lubrication off, all the protection off and it will even dry the rubbers out that are in there and do damage, it will let the water in. As the rubbers dry out they shrink, the water gets in, rust, chain, finished. So always use a releasant as opposed to a solvent and WD-40 GT85 plus gas whole myriad of different products. This one's just a cheap one from a local surplus store. A uh, bit of maintenance spray, it's oil based, and when you finish spraying it on and it's clean everything off, the residue that this leaves, the, uh, the carrier propellant in there will dry away and it will leave an oily residue on the chain, which is good. You don't want to leave that chain dry. It must have an oily finish. So, it's a little bit of that. It's an old toothbrush. Always use the wife's because it's a bit gritty afterwards if you use your own. And make sure that you get all that off. I'm gonna share it in a minute. Uh, and once the chain's nice and clean, we can then move on to adjustment and lubrication. So let's get it all cleaned up. Stick around. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to be spraying a lot of this all over the place, and it is an oil, and it's going to go on the tyre. So a little bit of cardboard, and just wedge it up the back of the chain like that. 
and then you can spray away ever so simple and all you're doing is sort of six inches of the chain at a time and if you get this stuff as cheap as I do just use as much of it as you want and this is about getting the dirt off and then to use a little bit of kitchen paper it doesn't have to be spotless it's not a show bike it's about mechanically getting all the crap off and all the grit that turns it into uh, a damaging paste. So once you've done that six inch section, let's move it on. Ready for the next one. Like I said, use an old toothbrush because it's better than using a wire brush. You've got little tiny rubbers down inside there that hold the lubricant in. And those little rubbers will be damaged by a wire brush. Even if it's the soft brass one, it will do them no good at all. So I'm going to work my way around this. Join me when it's finished. Right, here we go. So that's pretty much, I'm going to use a whole one of them as well. That's pretty much it. Like I said, most of you boys out there know exactly how to do this. This is nothing new. It's not difficult. So please excuse, I ain't trying to teach anyone how to suck eggs. But there's a lot of chains from looking at bikes I see around and people who don't know how to do this or they don't consider it relevant. And it seriously is because a chain is an expensive uh, component. You pay £125 for a chain and sprockets. And if you can make it last twice as long with a bit, a bit of this, then surely that's a sensible thing. So we've gone around it. I've used about a quarter of that, the old toothbrush, cleaned it all up. That is as clean as it needs to be. I'm going to take this out of the way a minute. And there's your chain. So a final clean. Just wipe it round. Get all this old chain lubricant that contains road grit and salt and snot off because it's important it must come off at regular intervals some guys absolutely swear by scott oilers the old automatic oilers and i totally agree they are brilliant they do make a bit of a mess but it's important even if you've got a scott oiler to check your chain visually if it's getting a bit loaded up with cack then the new scott oil that's going onto the chain isn't going through to the surface of the metal if there's too much of a build up. That's common sense, think about it. So just every now and again, that's taken me just five minutes with a kitchen roll, a bit of WD-40 equivalent, cheap version, and that's it. And that chain needs a little adjust. So that's it really. The first thing that you should always do when you're maintaining your chain before you get involved in re-lubing it and stuff is give it clean. Not just once a year, but whenever it's dirty. And that chain now is quite a new chain and already there's little spots of rust appearing, which is inevitable. You can't do much about it. It's not a stainless chain. It's a regular DID. It's a good quality chain, but it doesn't matter that they get uh, a bit rusted because they have a finite life anyway. When you want to check whether a chain is at it, you pull it off the back of the sprocket. Don't check there because you just adjust that. But that to that is solid. So to check whether a chain is worn, pull it off the back. And that's coming off a little bit at the minute, but it's fine. There's plenty of life left in that. There's plenty of adjustment left in here. So when you can pull that right off and get a screwdriver in there, that's knackered. And then you also check the teeth on the sprocket, which is very important as well. So there you go, one clean chain. Now it's time to adjust it and get the, uh, the tension of the chain correct. So let's get into that and do a bit of cleaning up. All right, time to adjust the chain now. Pretty straightforward. Again, you know, most of you guys know how to do this. I really didn't know whether to me bother making this video, but uh, here it is. Use it if you need it, but uh, please excuse if you already know this. Uh, it's a nice clean chain, spotlessly clean. Give it a good old wipe over. Three tools uh, on a bandit. Your bike might be different. Big 24mm socket and a big old sod off bar. Get a grip on it. And a 12mm and a 10mm to adjust the adjusters. So, just loosen the wheel off. Now the torque setting on a wheel is normally up around the 90 to 100 foot pound. But I personally believe that that, or much more than that, starts to crush the wheel bearings. I don't feel comfortable with that. It seems too much. It's just, you know, it goes tight at about 60 foot pound and then they expect you to wind another 30 in. But you do what your manual says, you do what's good for you. Don't listen to me. It's just what I do. Uh, so we've got it nice and loose. Now when you adjust the chain, very important point, you adjust it at its tightest point. A chain must not be tighter than the uh, inch and a half movement. The center of the chain is the point between the front sprocket, which is there, and the rear sprocket, which is there. So if you check that out as a distance, the middle's about there. 
and it's one and a half inches of up and down movement from the bottom to the top. If you want to be really accurate on that, get a tape measure or one and a half inches. So there's the bottom of it. So from the bottom there, that is about it. It doesn't need much at all. But if you check this out, this is an important point to note. Chains get weak spots, they get loose spots and tight spots. So you see there, that's got a huge loose spot. And this is as chains wear, this is inevitable. This happens, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just the way it goes. And then you come around, keep checking the tension and feel till you get to the tightest point. It's not much different to your primary chain on a Harley. Always adjust chains at their tightest point. Now one thing that's important, this bike is on the paddock stand. The paddock stand means that the weight of the bike is on it. And you should adjust your chain with it upright with the weight on it. If it's on a main stand and the back tire is off the ground and there's no weight on it, it's going to be falsely loose. So if necessary, just get a little bit of weight in it, uh, sack of spuds on the back, whatever, whatever you choose to call your girlfriend, and then lift it up and down until you get to the tightest point. And I reckon, let's go around it again. all about the same because this chain is quite new right there that's about the tightest point so we're going to adjust this that is still a little bit too much and you can see it's adjusting itself it's pulling that forward so we're going to pull that back a bit and it's ever so simple loosen off the lock nut come in close loosen off the lock nut and it's just a little nut in there that pushes against that. And you've got the little marks down here, which you can use. Now, if you really want to be anal about it, and you really want your chain to be accurate, get a, get a, a steel ruler and measure between that face there and that face there, and get those measurements the same. A lot of people don't go by these marks because they suggest these marks might be out. And they're not. They're actually quite accurate if you measure them. But a more accurate way is to measure between the back of the block and the back of the swing arm. So I'm going to just get them even with where they are. I'm going to check the chain, come back a little bit after a little bit, just pull it back. And there it is, that feels a fair old bit tight enough. Just do up the lock nut, just gently, because we're not going to nip it off yet. And then you've got to go around the other side and get it even. So just when you come around here, And on the other side, it's almost up against that big mark. All the little marks and the big mark. We're almost up against the big mark. So we're going to come back a little bit with the 10 mil. Okay, like I said, these little marks here, these little punch marks in the swing arm, they are quite accurate, believe it or not. But if you want an absolutely accurate way, this is a bandit. Many bikes have got this kind of carrier block and this kind of slide on the swing arm. Whatever it is, that's the distance there. And you just want them the same either side, which means the wheel is then facing exactly forward. And that is 15 and a half mil. Decent probably ruler. Don't get the ruler that your kids do at home work with, it's rubbish. Get a proper ruler. 16, 15 and a half mil. Half a mil is a perfect acceptable tolerance. Come around the other side. Checking it in there. Exactly the same. 15 and a half mil. So that wheel is now perfectly aligned. You can go one stage further. Um, and you can do laser wheel alignment. You can even purchase such an animal. Uh, these little laser wheel aligners are very trick, but you all know me, use what you have. There's no need for fancy ass tools. You can do it yourself. So do up the adjusters first, both sides, and do them up gently. And every time you do something, say do a little something up or make an adjustment, just check that ruler setting again because it can move and it's nice and tight again grab the ruler now I've knit those up and they're tight as they're going to be for riding check that again 15 and a half mil and the other side 15 and a half yep that's it perfect now it's just case doing the wheel up so again 
what I said about talking it up. If you want to talk your back wheel up, you talk it up because that's the correct way to do it. Uh, as long as it's over about 80 foot pound, that's fine. And a bar like this, you haven't even got to lean on it and it gets it well over. And with a bit of experience, you'll soon feel for your back wheel. You can strip that spindle clean off with a bar like this. If you feel that you're pulling too hard and it's just not stopping, bring your hand further up so you've got less purchase. And then you just get a little welly into it and that's fine. They ain't going anywhere. It's a lock nut anyway. And on a daily practice, you should always check things like that. You should be checking your brake pads, checking your, your chain, uh, checking your bulbs and brake lights. And just visually look at your wheel nut. Look at your brake caliper bulbs. Just make sure they're still there. And all that kind of thing to keep your life safe. So I'm going to do one more check. That's why I can't stress how important it is to get your rear wheel alignment perfect every single time. And once the chain has been adjusted and it's correct like that, now it's time to lubricate it and get some chain lube in there. Show you that. So all you gotta do, just an important thing. I see people spraying on the outside of chains, spraying on the back of the chain, utterly pointless exercise. You clean the chain, you've got all the old cack off it, you've opened up the metal to the air, and all you do, uh, and again, I'm not teaching you boys how to suck eggs, you do it your way, but this is what I do. Use the foot peg to steady your hand, hold it still, and then point the end cap or the end of the nozzle at the inside. Coming close. Inside in there, you want to be right up against the edge of them rollers so that you're running the lubricant down in that gap where it needs to be. And then we're going to do one pass like that. Then we're going to come out to this edge and go in this edge or down here and get that lubricant right in where it needs to be. So it's just a little bit at a time. Right hand on the back tyre, press the button, and as soon as you press the button, Move the chain. Coming close. And you can see the lube going on there. A little bit at a time. You're looking for that little bit of paper coming back around on you. Don't pass it too quick. You want plenty of lube in there. A good time to lube your chain is when it's hot and you've just been for a ride. You can't do that when you've cleaned it. So we've gone around it once, obviously a bit of cardboard to stop the lube going all over the bike. And now we're going to point it in there. Just letting the lube work its way in the joints. And don't ride the bike straight after doing this because this lubricant chain lube has a habit like so many other chain lubes of being full of thinners or carrier propellant and that will evaporate away, leaving the actual oil, the chain lubricant, in there. So if you ride it now, it'll all fling off. So give it a good couple of hours to just dry, preferably overnight. So finally, on the actual face of the rollers, a little bit further away, like that. Just one pass of the chain all the way around, job done. And there it is. That is a chain loop. Doesn't need any more than that. That chain is now perfectly clean, correctly adjusted, correctly lubricated. It even runs better. Look at that. When I first started this, it wasn't doing that. We have got a loose spot there, but also we don't adjust it to the loose spot. And what I said, as it goes round, there's the tight spot, and that's your inch and a half. So perfectly adjusted, perfectly clean, perfectly lubricated. Job well done. That's it. Sorry if it's been a bit of an egg sucking exercise. This all just to pass on a little bit of knowledge. Uh, and a very, very important piece of knowledge. If you haven't got it, get it done, practice it. Mail me if you need anything covered again. Thanks ever so much for watching. This has been Del Boys Garage. Y'all have been wonderful. See you next time.